All right, everybody, good Thursday afternoon. You know what time it is. You know what it's all about. Pass Coverage Thursday. And we didn't get completely lit up this week. Maybe if you graded us on a curve, you would say we kind of got lit up, but at least it wasn't 350 or 400 yards. At least it wasn't 500 total yards or 450 yards or whatever it had been the past month plus. So we got a little bit of a respite this week, but we still got to take a look at some of these numbers and figure out who's doing good, who's doing bad, and try to get an idea of where the actual problems are because there are still problems, guys. Big ones. So we start with the linebackers and we go on through talking about how each individual player is holding up in coverage. So... Bobby Wagner, uh, he was targeted, I believe, four times against Pittsburgh, allowed four completions. So every time he was targeted, he allowed a completion, but only 22 yards and no touchdowns. So his QB rating allowed actually fell a point or two. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty content living with that from your middle linebacker. Four plays, 22 yards, that's fine, especially on dropbacks. Uh, Jordan Brooks, um, let's take a look here. He was targeted three times, allowed three completions, and his yards allowed were, um, 24. So, eh. At least he's not getting destroyed like he was in some of these games. At least he didn't give up a touchdown. At least he didn't get demolished. But it's not great. You want a little bit better from your Will linebacker, I think. His QB rating allowed did drop to 115, so that's good, but he's got a long way to go. And that's it for the linebackers. Daryl Taylor didn't get targeted. Cody Barton didn't get targeted. So just looking at these two guys, it's not exactly surprising, right? Like we knew Jordan Brooks was going to be a bit of a coverage liability when he came into the NFL, and so far he has. Um... I don't think he's doing terribly in some of these games, but you can see that it is a weakness that some of these other teams are happy to exploit. And Wagner, I'm kind of disturbed by the fact that he's on pace to get targeted about 100 times this year, but he's holding up passably well. He's not forcing incompletions, but he is limiting yards. He is limiting the big plays. And for a linebacker of his age who was asked to do as much as he is, that's credible, I guess. Okay, now we go on to cornerbacks, and this is probably the most interesting thing. And uh, DJ Reed, I think, had some catch-up in his um, weekly accumulation of stats. I think that some of the stats they attributed to him this week were left over from previous weeks. So what I can say against Pittsburgh is he did play an effective game. I think he allowed a completion percentage of 50. He might have been targeted like eight times and allowed four completions or something like that. So he made some plays on the ball. He drew that uh, offensive pass interference penalty. He played a good game. He is clearly, clearly a different player when you place him on the other side of the defense. And it continues to be completely unacceptable that this team thought they could move him over to the other side without him dropping off at all because he is a completely different man. Um, His stats for the year are... Overall, not great, but if you take a look at just the game since he moved back to his natural side on defense, I I think he's playing really well. And if this continues, we may very well have a long-term answer at one cornerback spot. Uh, Trey Flowers not on the team anymore. Sidney Jones, he played a little bit. He got targeted three times, allowed two completions. Not too many yards, though. I think it was only just like, uh, yeah, seven yards, apparently. So Sidney Jones was actually playing more or less fine before he got injured. And we might not be seeing Sidney Jones anymore, so he ends his very short uh, tenure as a starting Seattle cornerback, potentially, with um, some truly awful uh, coverage metrics. Like, this is possibly historically bad. And you can bash Sidney Jones as much as you want to, because I will too, but he wasn't nearly that bad in Jacksonville. He was not nearly this bad in Jacksonville, so something's in the water here. That, that's all I can say about that. It, it just, it's not a good fit or something. Uh, bless you when Austin didn't play, but who did play is Trey Brown. <clears throat> and 
these coverage stats back up what we saw with our eyes. Five targets, two completions for nine yards, and he made two really good plays on uh, short passes. One was a screen, the other was just a short little um, pass to the flats. And he made plays to help prevent those plays from going anywhere productive. So, Trey Brown, you're off to a great start in Seattle. I saw a lot of things I liked from you. I may even make another video about you because a lot of people are really gassed up for you. So, good start. All right, uh, that gets us to the uh, nickel corners. And we did see a little bit more Marquise Blair than Amadi this week, which was different. So, how did they fare? Uh, Marquise Blair was targeted twice. I think he allowed two completions. Yes, he did. And he allowed 21 yards in coverage, so not the greatest, but fine. Perfectly adequate. And his numbers for the season are actually, not that he's played a ton, mind you, but they're pretty sharp. It seems like, I, I know that he's not doing the other things that we want him to do, but in this area, at the very least, he is certainly no liability. Ugo Amadi played a little bit less, and he got targeted once and allowed a completion for, uh, I think, two yards. So he did well, too. So Ugo's doing his job. Ugo's playing reasonably well. The touchdown that he allowed is the main reason why his metrics are, look so much worse than Blair. And that is a big deal. But um, I think both these guys, other than Amadi against the Vikings, where he was truly atrocious, I think they're both playing okay. I think I get a little too hard on Blair sometimes when I'm watching the games, but then I come back and look at it, and I'm like, yeah, was it was he really that bad? No. And finally, that gets us to our safeties. So, Jamal Adams, this is why it's so frustrating that he drops those interceptions. Because if you take a look at these coverage numbers, he was targeted twice, he allowed one completion, and apparently it was for two yards. Which... I was a little surprised by when I um, ran the numbers. So, great coverage numbers, right? Like, allowing two yards in coverage as a strong safety. Any team in the league will take that. But, you gotta have that pick. You had two great chances to flip the game with an interception, and you don't do it. That's why you get paid what you get paid. That's why you don't get paid $8 million. You get paid twice that. Come down with the ball. I want to sit here and praise you for having such a good game in coverage, but I can't without looking like an idiot because I saw you drop those two interceptions and I feel like the best safety in the league, the greatest in the nation or whatever you called yourself, should be able to make at least one of those plays. So I can't even really be happy about that. Uh, Diggs did not get targeted according to PFR, which uh, that's kind of what you want from your free safety. And Ryan Neal actually got targeted quite a bit. He was targeted four times, allowed four completions for a total of uh, 29 yards. So he got picked on a little bit, but nothing terrible. He didn't give up any huge plays. He didn't get beat deep. Just some stuff that happens over the flow of a game. Nothing too bad. And that's it for this video. So there is some good news starting to come out here. But from where I'm sitting right now... The main issue that this team has in coverage really is Jordan Brooks. To me, he's the closest thing to a liability right now if DJ Reed and Trey Brown can keep it up. And I do need to see more from them. But as of right now, it's believable that they're going to start giving us a presence at cornerback. And yeah, I, I just right now I'm looking at Jordan Brooks and thinking we have a elephant in the room here. And uh, I don't know what we do to fix it because we knew this was the problem when we drafted him. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. See you guys later in stream. And, oh, Hawks Nest uh, collaboration coming this afternoon on his channel. Make sure you tune in. Um, we talk about a lot of good stuff. We're going to have some fun stuff to do this week as well.